Hi, my name is Eyal and I'm going to talk about RC car radio control basics. The demonstrated examples will be applied on Traxxas Slash Platinum RC car, the FlySky FS GT3B radio controller and the FlySky GR3E receiver kit. But most of the concepts apply to most RC cars and radio controllers. Most RC cars use two channels. Channel 1 connects to the steering wheel servo. Channel 2 connects to the ESC, which is the electronic speed controller. EPA, which is endpoint adjustment, is used to limit the maximum value of any channel on each direction. For example, on channel 1, the EPA limits the maximum angle of the steering wheel to the right and left directions. On channel 2, the EPA limits the maximum speed of the forward and backward directions. The following graph demonstrates on channel 2 which is the car speed, how the EPA affects the relations between stick travel and car speed. Let's do an example of EPA on channel 1. The remote control EPA is set to 100% in channel 1, which is the steering wheel, in each direction. Let's turn the wheels all the way right, all the way left. Remember these angles. Now I set the EPA to 30%. Let's turn the wheels all the way right, all the way left. Behold the maximum angles of the wheels are only a small amount of what they were. Let's do an example of EPA on channel 2. The remote control EPA is set to 100% in channel 2, which is the speed, in each direction. Let's put a full speed to the forward direction. Now to the reverse direction. Remember this speed. Now I set the EPA to 15%. Let's put a full speed to the forward direction. Now to the reverse direction. Behold, the maximum velocities are only a small amount of what they were. Exponent function is the sensitivity curve between the control stick travel and the car output. When you move the throttle stick, the car drives. The more stick travel, the faster the car goes. The stick travel affects the speed outcome. But what is the exact relation between the stick travel and the speed? Basically, there are three relations linear, negative exponential, and positive exponential. For negative exponential, the curve is closer to linear when the value of the exponential function is closer to 0% and closer to negative exponential as the value of the exponential function is closer to minus 100%. For positive exponential, the curve is closer to linear when the value of the exponential function is closer to 0% and closer to positive exponential as the value of the exponential function is closer to 100%. Exponential function is subject to the EPA function, meaning it controls the sensitivity manner 
of the remote control stick travel, but is subject to the edge values that were configured in the EPA earlier. The following figure demonstrates the three relations subject to the edge values that were configured in the EPA earlier. A beginner should use linear curve, which is the default curve, or the negative exponential. Only advanced users may use the positive exponential since the remote controller sticks would be very responsive. Dual rate works the same way as endpoint adjustment, but instead of affecting each direction of each channel separately, it affects all the elements of a channel the same way. The dual rate is subject to the edge values that were configured in the EPA earlier. The following graphs demonstrate how the dual rate affects the relations of the throttle stick and car speed with regards to the EPA. First, let's set the EPA of channel 1 to the left and right directions to 100%. Now it's set to the left direction 100%. Now we set the right direction to 100%. Okay, so now the EPA on channel 1 is set to both direction 100%. Now we go to the dual rate. And we set the dual rate of channel 1 to 50%. Remember, dual rate changes the the both values of the left and right direction to 50%. This is 50% of the value of the EPA. Now it's 25% of the values of the EPA. Remember that. The trim function lets you adjust the values of each channel when the remote control sticks are at idle. This is called an offset or a bias, by the way. In our case, we talk about channel 1, which is the steering wheel stick, and channel 2, which is the throttle stick. Let's do an example of the trim function on channel 1. The remote control is now at idle. The trim function on channel 1 is set to 0, and as you can see, the steering wheels are directing straight, meaning they have no bias, or in other words, they have zero bias. Now let's change the value to 30. Behold that the remote controller sticks are at idle, but the steering wheels are biased to the right side. Let's do an example of the trim function on channel 2. The remote controller is now at idle. The trim function on channel 2 is set to 0. And as you can see, the speed is 0. Now let's change the value to 30. Behold that the remote controller sticks are at idle. But the car has a forward bias speed. Do we really need the trim function? Yes. In lots of cases, the car's steering wheels are a little bit biased, thus not driving the car straight when only the speed stick is moved. In order to correct it, the trim function of the steering wheels needs to compensate for that bias. The reverse function lets you reverse the direction of each channel. When I got my remote controller and receiver kit and installed it, when I moved the throttle stick forward, the car went backwards. 
The easy way to fix it was to set the reverse function of channel 2 to reverse instead of normal. In some electric cars, the brake system is done by the motor itself. Braking can be done by changing the throttle stick direction to the opposite side while in motion. If you want to brake the car in a pulsating ABS-like manner, choose one of the ABS modes, if available. In some receivers, when you install them for the first time, if the car is turned on before the remote controller, the car may go nuts driving anywhere. It can also happen while driving the car if the remote controller fails for some reason. Failsafe function which must be set for the first time, makes sure that when the mode controller fails for some reason, the car would stay at idle. In the following video, demonstrate a case where the failsafe function was not set, while the remote controller failed, and how it was fixed by setting the failsafe function. Let's see what may happen when the car is turned on. The failsafe function was not initially set, and the radio controller communication fails. Let's turn the radio controller back on. Turn the car off. Turn the radio controller off. This is why we need the fail safe function. Turn on the radio controller. Turn on the car controller. Press the setting button for 3 seconds and the red light should flash. After 3 seconds, the light stop flashing. Let's test it. When I close the radio controller, the car is at idle. Mission accomplished. Turn off the car controller. Some remote controllers are able to be configured to control multiple compatible receivers. One use for it is when you have two or more cars which you want to control separately with the same remote controller. Of course the receivers and remote controller must be compatible to each other and support binding. The Flysky FSGT3B Remote controller and Flysky GR3E receiver support this property. This property is applied for this set in the following manner. The radio controller has a unique ID. The binding process lets the receiver identify the ID number of the radio controller and bind to it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked my video, please do me a like and thank you for watching.